and whosoever will that's in the church let him take the water of life how now where you gotta come to get the water to the throne to the throne hallelujah to the lamb to the father that's where he proceeds from Jesus the baptizer in the Holy Ghost oh but now listen these words are the words that were given by the Holy Ghost to the church here is the last word of revelation to all the churches come drink of the water drink of the Holy Ghost drink 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 oh there is something that can break every negative power off your life between the power of the Lord and the power of the Spirit we can walk in perpetual victory we can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Notice this, uh, verse 1. Behold my servant. This is in reference to Jesus Christ. The Father said, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. Woo! I have put my spirit on him. Hallelujah. See, Jesus was spirit baptized. Hallelujah. I put my spirit on him. And look at verse 4. He shall not what? Fail. See, that's the Holy Ghost life. He shall not fail or what else? He never knew defeat. See, defeat is of the curse. Jesus never knew what it was to be worn out. The Bible says it took everything for the disciples to keep up with him. Amen. Jesus told him, I got food that you know not of. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus just kept going. Then when he could not do as much as he wanted, that's when he sent them out. Amen. But you see, Jesus was spirit filled. So he operated under what your Bible calls my blessing, my blessing, my blessing. It's in conjunction with the Holy Spirit flowing and flooding your life. And it scares me today because there are so many believers who are not spirit filled. I'm not my people say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe the word of God. You know, they'll argue the Bible all day long and then go home and smoke because they're so defeated. Oh, God. Look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, please. Knowing that nicotine poison in your life, it's killed already hundreds of thousands of people. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and you're killing it. Well, the Bible says death is under the curse, not the blessing. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. You're killing yourself. Yes. Then you're going to argue the Bible. Just shut up till you get spirit filled. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you can get your own life from under the curse. Amen. Amen. Notice Ezekiel 36, please. Look at verse 27. Hallelujah. Notice God says, and... I will put my spirit within who? You. Now, of course, this is prophetic for the church. Because this new thing didn't begin until the church. The Bible says the Holy Ghost was not yet given for Jesus Christ was not yet glorified, right? Yeah. See, Jesus had to go to the cross, resurrect, then he baptizes in the Holy Spirit. 
But, but now notice God says, and I will put my spirit. Matter of fact, verse 26 talks about giving you a new heart. That's, that's the new birth. After you have the new birth, then he says, now I want to fill you with my spirit. But now notice what happens after you get spirit filled. Look at verse 30. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that what? Read it. That you shall receive no more reproach or curse. Now notice, you receiving no more curse is the same you I put my spirit in. See, the verse up above that where it says, I will put my spirit in you. Thede says, you will no more experience reproach. Why? From the curse of lack, struggle, discouragement, despondency, just trying to make it like Adam lived under the, the curse. That should be broken for the believer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me show you why. Are y'all still here? Yeah. Look at verse 35. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Well, your Bible says the garden of Eden was well watered, well watered. There was abundance of everything. You know when Adam came under the curse, when he was put out of the garden. He says, once you get the Holy Spirit, you come back to the life of the garden. Not a life of struggle and misery and can't hardly make it till the day you die. No! You live on top by the... Oh, why don't you say amen to the word? It's your Bible talking. It's the word of God. Hallelujah! Here's what we do. We tell our children, catch your education, catch your education, catch your education, do this, do that, do that. Go join the military, do something, do that. Why don't you tell them, get the Holy Ghost, get to the throne of God, get spirit filled. God's people live no different from the world. You join something and trust the government to take care of you for the rest of your life. No, I got something better than that. I got something God called my blessing. And my blessing will come on your life in the form of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that you will know, you will never again experience no more the reproach, the curse. He says if you don't drink these waters, Jacob is cursed and Israel is reproached. Here he says, you get the Holy Ghost, no more reproach, no more curse. You live like Adam did before, the Bible says, the ground is cursed now, Adam, because of you. Are y'all here? Yeah. Do you all see this? Yeah. It's not made up stuff. I didn't write you a book. Believe the book you carry. Father, fill me. Father, keep me filled. Keep me thirsty. Keep me hungry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Aisha got this thing way back yonder. And she act like she's still spirit filled. She act like she still can let the river just flow out of her. Just flow. Praise God. Hallelujah going around the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now notice, if you will, Psalm 72. Psalms 72. Psalms 72. Thank you, Jesus. Are you all seeing these things? These are magnificent truths. Talking about breaking the curse. Jesus only broke the curse off of people's lives through the flow of the Holy Spirit that was in his life. He said he cast out devils by the Holy Ghost, didn't he? Yeah. He says, if I cast out devils by the Holy Ghost, then know the kingdom of God has come. Hallelujah. 
It takes the Holy Ghost, you see. Well, I got my confessions. Got them all lined up on the refrigerator, on my car dash. Got all my confessions. But you won't come drink of the Holy Spirit. So what you have amounts primarily to witchcraft. You're trying to manipulate things in your own power. There's a river that can flood your life so tremendously that you'll never know struggle again. Let me show you. Notice uh, Psalm 72. And look at verse 6. Are y'all there? Watch these verses very carefully. He, not it, he's talking about a personality. He shall come down in the form like what? Now, what comes down from heaven like rain? And it's a person. He. It's the Holy Ghost. He shall come down like rain upon a mold dry patch of grass. Like showers that water the earth. In his days, that's the days of the Holy Ghost in Philly. In his days, when he come down like rain, shall the righteous what? Woo! When the Holy Ghost come like floods, like rivers, like rain upon the dry ground, the righteous shall flourish. Hallelujah. If you don't like it, snatch it out your Bible. In his days shall the righteous flourish. Notice, an abundance, an abundance of peace as long as the moon endures. Well, the moon ain't going nowhere yet. Now listen, of course we know the word peace in the Hebrew is shalom, which means to be well off and prosperous in every area of life. No, say you shall have abundance of shalom. Who are these? The righteous. Who are they? Those who believe on Jesus according to the scriptures. Then they're supposed to have the river to flow. You know, all rivers come as a result of rain. All rivers form by the flooding of rainwater. When it doesn't rain, all rivers dry up. All rivers is a result of rain. Because all rivers are fresh water, you see. Fresh water only comes from heaven. Now, let me just say this very clearly. So, very clearly. Roger's sitting up so well. <laughs> very clearly. Your Bible says... Your, my ability to flourish is based upon him coming like, in typology, like rain. God has to come in the form of water. So we know this is God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He must come in this form and flood our lives. And this flood becomes blessings. Blessings of abundance to the righteous. But notice, not apart from the reign of the Spirit. Do you all see this? Man, you know, if this was me, Reverend Joe, I'll say, preacher, stop now. Just open up the altar call. <laughs> People baffle me. They can hear the word and never move. That baffles me in this day. It's a strong demonic spirit of indifference and laziness and complacency over the land. I'm not talking about you. It's over the land. 
It's a devil. We're going to break out of that and break over into blessings. I say we're going to break over into blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me see how much time I have. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6. And look at verse 7. These are going to be amazing verses. Don't miss them, please. Hebrews chapter 6, and look at verse 7, please. Whoo! For the earth, he's using typology of rain again. For the earth, which you drink of in the what? See, it don't work if you don't drink it in. You know, there are some parts of the earth, if it rain, it just roll off. No, you got to be the type of soil that receives it. I said you got to be the type of soil that receives the Holy Ghost when he begins to pour. God help us to get it. Your Bible never lies about anything. Notice what it says, please. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it. And as a result, bringeth forth fruit, fit for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth what? Notice when you receive the reign of the Holy Spirit, you've received the blessing from God. Notice what your Bible says. When you receive the reign of the Holy Spirit from heaven, the rain causes your life to increase. The Bible calls this the blessing of God. Do you see this? Look at the next verse. But that which is, but that which beareth thorns and briars. That speaks of the curse. Adam did not know thorns and briars until God told him the earth, the, the earth is now cursed under your feet. God told Adam for the rest of your life is going to bring forth briars and thorns. See, briars and thorns is, is a word that represents the curse that came. Are y'all understanding this? Notice it says, but that which beareth briars and thorns or live under the curse is what? Just like Adam was. And it is near under what? Just like Adam. See, a life of briars and thorns of emptiness and drought and hardship, the Bible equates that life to the curse. It equates the life that, received the, that receives the rain of heaven and flourishes as a result of the rain. That's the blessing. Do you see the difference? Look at the next verse. But behold, we are persuaded... Better things of you, Christians, and things that accompany what? Now, you know what things he's talking about that accompany salvation? He's talking about the blessings and not the curse. Notice that verse begins with but. So it ties directly into what was said above it. He said in the last verse, verse 8, he says he's talking about the curse. But he says, but you, we are expecting better things than a curse out of your life. The things that accompany salvation is verse 7. It's the blessings. What are they? The blessings. That should accompany us. Well, the Bible says in the Holy Ghost, there's righteous joy and peace. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there's faith and love and meekness, you see. And on and on and on. See, these things are to accompany our lives, and these are the blessings. Should I close the book and let you go home? Okay, thank you, Tommy. Thank God for Tommy. I don't know, Tommy's just waking up. <laughs> Notice Isaiah 55. Notice Isaiah, and see, the truth of it is, we could go on and on and on and on like this forever, because your Bible is full of this. 
this analogy of rain and water from heaven blessing the souls of the people of God. And the Bible always qualifies it as the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Notice Isaiah 55. Now you might need to hold my mule because I feel a shout coming on. Notice Isaiah 55, please. In chapter 53, we know Jesus Christ died. That's the great chapter of Jesus Christ's death. Chapter 54 is a chapter of his resurrection. Now chapter 55 is a chapter about the believers being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now notice chapter 55 and verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirst, do what? Come. That's what Revelation preached. That's what Jesus preached. Here's the Old Testament prophet prophesying it. After Jesus' death, after his resurrection, now just can't say, I believe on Jesus, come get the Holy Ghost. Come get spirit filled. Notice what it says. Oh, everyone that thirst, come to what? Come to the waters. Come to the Holy Ghost. And he that has no money, come. Buy and eat. Buy and eat what? Yes, come. Buy wine and milk. Well, in your Bible, wine and milk always speaks of the blessed life. In your Bible, wine and milk is always a type of the blessed, prosperous life. Now, notice he says, when you receive these waters, you get the wine and the milk. Are y'all in this house? Notice this verse says, when you receive the waters, you get the wine and the milk, the blessed life. Notice what it says. And you can buy the wine and the milk without money and without price. Praise God. It's free when you get the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 3. Incline your ear. See, that's what Revelation chapter 22 says. Let everybody that heareth, you got to hear the call to the Spirit. Notice, incline your ear and come unto me. You got to come to Jesus to get it. Hear, and your soul shall what? Your soul shall be flourishing with life. Because these waters are waters of life. Are you here? Now notice the result of getting these waters. Look at verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, see this is a type, as, like an as. For like an as the rain cometh down, and the snow from where? That's where these waters come from. And returneth not there. Why? Because Jesus says when you get the Holy Ghost, he'll be with you forever. He'll never leave. Notice, but waters the earth and maketh it bring forth the bud that it may give, that it may give, that it may give blessings and increase, basically. Notice, drinking these waters will cause to give into your life blessings and increase. Look at verse 13, please. Instead. See, you get blessings and increase instead. Instead of what? Now the thorn always speaks of the curse. Do you see this? Hebrews 6 tied in the thorn and the briar to the curse. When you, once you receive these waters, you get the blessings and instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. First tree speaks of royalty and greatness. And instead of the briar shall come up what? That speaks of tranquility and peace. I didn't read this in Revelation because I just didn't have time to read everything. But in Revelation chapter 22 verse 1, it talks about uh, these waters uh, coming from the throne. Then verse 2 talks about, and there'll be trees, a lot of trees. 
and the leaves of the trees will be for the healing of the nations. I skipped that verse because I didn't have time. But see, these, these special kind of trees will pop up as a result of that river of the Spirit flowing. Are y'all here? It's all in your Bible. I heard Reverend Joseph say, yes, it is. He's number four of four kids. He's the baby. His dad is a pastor, been pastor in the same church for 30 years. And he told me all four of them are in the church. I say, man, that's the greatest compliment that your mother and father could ever have. All four of their children are serving God. Nothing else matters outside of that. That's a blessed seed. He wasn't stupid when he married Aisha. <laughs> he knew he got hold of something good. <laughs> well, my God, I'm going to stop. We could go on forever like this, you understand. Can I share something else with you? Now, see, I said let's go stop and nobody said nothing. <laughs> Let me do it like this. Let me do this one. Listen to me. The book of Galatians speaks of blessings and curses. It says, all who are under the law are cursed. Doesn't it? Yeah. It said, all who, are, who have faith like Abraham come under Abraham's blessing. But the Bible says the faith that brings us under Abraham's blessing is faith, is, is faith to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Then he says, all those who are led by the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, they manifest the fruits of the Spirit against such there is no law. If there is no law, there can be no curse. Because the Bible says the curse is exclusively because of the law. So when you walk, when you are Spirit-filled and walk by the leading and walk in the Holy Spirit, you bring yourself out from under the possibility of being cursed. It's all because of the Holy Spirit. Now, we can read about that, but I don't have time. See, it's the Holy Spirit that takes us out of the curse. Spend your life drinking in the Spirit. Don't let your life be so distracted with so much junk. Spend your life drinking in the Spirit of God. and your life will never be the same. Thank you for watching Victory For Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407-296-7131 or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.